Yeah, the ID TechX and yeah. uh, with Power Hydrant. And who are you? I'm uh, Kevin Leary. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Power Hydrant. So you were just asking him some questions. So what do you think about the technology right here? Well, I was just going to ask him uh, how uh, how it works and uh, what uh, what level of traction they've gotten with it in terms of uh, getting it uh, out to market. And who are you? What do you uh, do? Oh, my name is Barry, uh, Barry Fitzgerald. I'm uh, a rep. A rep? Yeah. So uh, right here, what do you show here? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we actually have our uh, conductive robotic um, EV charging system. Uh, the, the concept is simple. It's a, it's a robot that uh, can conductively connect to uh, an electric vehicle. Uh, we're showing a, a, a Nissan LEAF here as a target vehicle. Uh, frankly, our early customers will be people uh, operating electric buses and electric delivery vans. Uh, ultimately, uh, electric uh, Uber autonomous vehicles uh, are on our customer base. And uh, the thing these people are interested in is either the autonomous aspect of it or the labor reduction aspect of it combined with the fact that since we're conductive and since we're a machine, we can handle massive amounts of electrical current into a target vehicle. So for example, some of our customers are interested in charging at rates of up to 500 kilowatts, that's a thousand amps uh, going to the vehicle. Uh, so uh, you can only do that uh, with a copper wire, and it's going to be a big copper wire, so why not do it with a machine? Uh, an autonomous vehicle, uh, it doesn't need a human to drive, so why have a human to charge it? And uh, the uh, intent here is uh, to eliminate the human. And then on a, on a more systematic basis, uh, Power Hydrant is sort of one link in an overall energy chain where things like electric school buses and electric buses can really be an energy storage system when they're idle. And that energy storage system can be connected to the grid uh, with Power Hydrant uh, through its conductive bi-directional connection. So you do a computer vision directed robot for hands-free automatic affordable EV charging. Yeah. And yeah. so this is, uh, how do you do that? Yeah, so uh, basically we're using smartphone components. Yeah. We've got uh, a connector, and uh, there's a better view of it here. We uh, have two image sensors. They're right out of a smartphone. They're already price commoditized. Yeah. And we're uh, using uh, those image sensors to calculate a stereo 3D point cloud. Yeah. And that's a, a sparse point cloud. That's a green blob here. It's just a portion of the vehicle. But we're also in radio contact with the target vehicle, so we know the model of the vehicle, in this case, a Tesla Model S. So we pull up a virtual reality model of the Tesla Model S, computationally align it to the 3D point cloud, and with that, we know everything about the Tesla Model S, where the inlet port is, but we also know a collision map. We can tell the robot, don't go near these areas because that's where an actual car is. And we're taking advantage of the commoditization of all this technology by way of the smartphone. And uh, we've got some videos running here. Here's an example of uh, the original sparse point cloud. Uh, then it is expanded out to include uh, our proximity map. And then we align the target vehicle pulled from our library. And you can see it going through a slowed down version of our alignment process. This is all synthetic computation happening in the robot. And it actually is an example of augmented reality mixing uh, with uh, reality uh, to give a, the target uh, 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 of the uh, robot to connect to it. So how far in the future is this? Uh, well, we have a prototype uh, with a customer right now, and uh, our biggest constraint is uh, financing, frankly. So uh, we're living in an era where uh, the smartphone uh, dividend uh, is uh, is exploitable by uh, industrial products like this. Uh, uh, we've uh, we're a small startup, so we've got constraints of financing keeping us getting this product to market. If uh, we we're a fully financed operation, uh, it would be uh, in market today. So it's just about uh, maybe Elon Musk is around in the conference or somebody, and yeah. then. Then yeah, happens? that's well. That's part of the dream. I think uh, dealing with an important manufacturer like uh, like Tesla and others, uh, you have to have your act together. So uh, to some degree, um, you have to be uh, at the right place in your life to be with uh, an important customer like that. We're probably a little bit early for Elon Musk, but uh, <laughs> eventually we'd love to do a deal with them. How long have you been working on this? Uh, so we've been working seriously on this for about uh, two years. Uh, we uh, are part of the uh, MIT Startup Exchange. Uh, we uh, were part of the uh, Autodesk Startups in Residence program. And uh, now we have uh, office space in the Innovation District in Boston.